you've been hurt in an accident, turn to someone you can trust. Enough said. Call Ed. I'm Ed Bernstein, and I've been helping you and your neighbors for more than 30 years. Hi, hey, welcome back to the show. You know, my, my throat is a little bit um, hoarse today. I guess I slept uh, I with, the, same thing, with the windows open. But I'm happy that my guest is Jay Cordish. Yep. Because, Jay Cordish, you've always been you know, known in the past as a juice man. Uh, you almost single-handedly created the whole juicing craze that is all around the world. And what, what, are you, what, are you, what do I need to do for, a, for a, a throat like this? Hey, listen, I've got the same thing. I, I'm breathing Las Vegas air myself, and I'm not used to it. Right. So I've got a little sore throat. So uh, I'm going to start making some juices. So I'm going to take a piece of it's a rare piece of horseradish, throw it through the juice machine, and throw some apple in there. Hold it, a, a piece of horseradish. Yeah, you take a jar yeah, of horseradish. About one, yeah, about one slice of it. Right. You know, yeah, around like With that. With an apple. Yeah, shove that through there and throw the apple right on top of it, and that apple juice will wash that horseradish flavor right out into the drink, and then you drink it. It's very strong. You know, some people put a little honey in after they make it. Right. But that, that, that horseradish is a terrific thing when you have, in fact, I'll tell you, if you have a sore throat and you have to lecture somewhere or be somewhere where you have to use your voice, right. take a piece of horseradish and put it in your mouth and just start grinding with your teeth and chew it. If harsh as it is, don't worry, it'll heal all that soreness that you have down on the vocal cords. Wow, it sounds like it would hurt, it would irritate my throat more. <laughs> but you're, it, it, no, it, it, he's a healer. Works, it works. You know? Jay Cordes is the author of, um, what is the name of this book? Life, Foods, Foods Live Bodies. bodies. How, how can you Cordes. put dead food, how can you put foods that are cooked in your body and expect something that's cooked and altered by heat, how can you expect it to buy, build live cells? So, so, so cells? are you an yeah. advocate for, for raw foods? Raw foods. I'm, a, I'm an advocate. Everything. Absolutely. That's what juicing's all about. You you throw carrots in that juicer, spinach, celery, parsley, or, or cantaloupe with the skin and all after you wash the pesticides off. And pineapple juice. You've never had pineapple juice. You get it in a can. It's all sterilized. The average age of anything that you buy in a can or a bottle is a little bit better than two years old in a warehouse. Stored. And pineapple juice you get has some water in it, too. You make your own pineapple juice. When you make it fresh and you drink it fresh, it's one of the greatest healers of a sore throat you'll ever have in your life. There's nothing better than the, the bromelain that's in pineapple juice. And you know? for uh, inflammation too, right? Oh sure. Uh, you know, uh, look, you're not you're you're talking to the uh, to the to the what is the, what is the term? <laughs> you're talking to the jury. Uh, the uh, oh, 20 years ago. Yeah. When I first met you. Yeah. And you were running around uh, with the juicer, doing Juicers the juice man over. thing. You were on every infomercial, right, everywhere. Right. Anytime you put it on your television, it was Jay Cordes, right. juice man, all over the place. And at that time, you taught me about juicing. You taught me, I bought a machine from you. Um, you taught me how to juice. And from that day on, every morning, I make a fresh juice for the last 20 years. I don't think I've missed more than a dozen days in the That's last 20 years really of making a fresh juice yeah. for myself. One of the things I did notice when I make juices is that if you don't drink it right away, I, might, I say right away, I'm talking in the first 60 seconds or yeah, so, yeah. you can see how the composition of the juice begins to change in the glass. Is that, right. is, that, is that what happens? Sure. That's called oxidation. As soon as you re see. Let's take a look at a carrot or a pineapple or an orange or, or grapes or whatever. There's millions of cells in an orange, and each cell is a body onto its own, and that little membrane holds a liquid in it called juice, you know? And as soon as you open that little membrane up and extract the juice from it, it hits the air, and the air starts to oxidize it, and everything starts to change molecularly inside. So you can lose. In, in within a half an hour, you can lose anywhere from 20 to 50 percent of the food value, and the enzymes, which are the chemical catalysts, which speed up and slow down chemical reactions, uh, they're totally changed real fast. You know, so you want to make the. It's almost. Let's say you had a juicer here, right? right. It's almost uh, that you had a juicer right here. Here's a spout coming out. You're in your own kitchen, and you say, uh, Edna or or Marge, whatever. You want some of this juice? 
put your mouth under that spigot, that spout. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the stuff through and you just let it come right from the juicer into your mouth. It's almost that imperative that you drink juices that quickly, you know? So when you buy a uh, apple juice in a bottle or, or a can, um, Pineapple juice in a Pine can or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you're just not really getting the, the everything, full flavor everything. effect. Everything, everything. Unless you go to a, a store that makes it for you fresh, like a juice bar or something mm -hmm. like that. Everything in a can or a bottle that you and I or anybody else will buy, no matter what it is, if it's in a can or a bottle, it's a federal law. They had to run it through a cooker, a, a, a sterilizing machine. Right to kill the life force, the enzymes, which are your chemical catalysts, which speed up and slow down chemical reactions. So, uh, so everything on a conveyor belt has to be heated, so that gives that canned or bottled juice shelf life. So when they box it and they ship it to different supermarkets or whatever, well, those things aren't sold immediately. When they open up the, the, the case of mm -hmm. juice, whatever it might be, apple juice, pineapple juice, orange juice, whatever, that's not sold right away as soon as they, it's delivered to the, to the, to the, the, the store. That's been sitting in a warehouse for a few weeks at least, and sometimes months and months and months on end. And sometimes when you buy it, it's already six months or eight months old or a year or two old. Right. It's dead. They run it through a cooker. You, everybody out there has to be their own cannery. You have to be your own cannery. You can't buy things in cans and bottles and expect to be healthy. You have to be the juice manufacturer. You have to run the carrots through there. Like when I had my bladder condition, you know, Dr. Max Gerson, who was Dr. Oh, Albert okay. Schweitzer's pr private private physician. This, thought, this is how you got started. That's in right. What, how old were you then? Oh, 24, 25. Okay. May, no, no, I was maybe 26. Okay, years so old. you're 26 years old, and what was yeah, your I'm physical peeing blood. condition? Okay. I was eating meat every day, hamburgers, steaks. I was doing everything. Right. I was an athlete. I played football for USC and drafted by the Green Bay Packers, you know, mm -hmm. and. I played in the Rose Bowl and Michigan beat us 48, 49 to nothing, I think it was, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that was one of those crazy days. You know, they were hot. They were the best team they in the were country. Hot and you weren't juicing. Yeah, I wasn't juicing. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, did I learn to juice right after okay, that. So, so you, you're having a bladder problem. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you went to see a doctor. I went to see Dr. Max Gerson. I went all the way from California to New York because I, I had read in my science classes all about this doctor that was so terrific with the urinary tract especially, and which, which I had. And I went and I called him up and I said, I'm going back, they didn't have any money, but I got back there, I took a bus, mm -hmm. have to transfer bus, you know, and got all the way to New York City and went to see this fantastic doctor. And the reason I went to him, because in my medical classes at USC, uh, I found out that he was the guy, he was the doctor that put Dr. Albert Schweitzer the greatest doctor in all, of all time, the Nobel Prize winner. When Schweitzer had cancer, he went to see Dr. Max Gerson. And I said, wait a minute. If it's good enough for Schweitzer, it's going to be good enough for me, you know? So I went to him and I said, I, I, and I went all the way there. I didn't call him up till I got there and told him all about it and I sat and talked to him. And he says, here's what you have to do. And he gave me the parameters to work under. Juicing, number one. Leafy greens, put them through there. Do the pineapple juice, freshly made, because there's a certain substance called bromelain that takes the swelling and the pain out of the joints. I, I, you don't know how many people, I, I, baseball pitchers that have bursitis and they, they, they can't throw that baseball hard, I get them on pineapple juice, next thing you know, they're throwing fastballs you know, in the baseball team again, you know? It's, it's amazing, because I, I, I have problems. I've got a knee replacement here, you know? And boy, when I start drinking juices, that knee really feels great. When I'm not drinking juices, I'm kind of limping, mm -hmm. you know? That's from all the football I played. You, you know, in, you, in those days, I mean, you're, what, 80? What am I now? Five? Born in 22, 1922. You're born in 22. 88? So, 88 now. You're 88. Yeah. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to think about time. Now, when you're a young man at 26, and you yeah. go and you meet the doctor, and he tells you to start juicing. In those days, now, correct me if I'm wrong, if you wanted to make some orange juice, you yeah. had this machine and you took, cut an orange in half mm -hmm. and you put, laid and you squeezed yeah. the orange yeah, on those top. Those reamers, those are reamers. called a reamer, like yeah. this. Yeah. And and you got um, the, the, the what was some pulp and some orange juice, right. and that was the technique. But yeah. that's not really the the best way to get the juice out of an orange, no, is it? That's only squeezing an orange. 
I can get the same thing out of just taking a cut an orange in half and squeeze it with my hand like that right. and have a glass under there and catch the juice. But that's only like sugar water. What you have to do is break it open the membranes and you have to rip them open because the white part has all the food value, and not just the juicy part. The white membranes, part. The white part, the, the pulpy part. Mm -hmm. Sure, it has the B complex, uh, vitamin C, it has all of it. So when I make, when I make orange juice now, I peel only the coloring of an orange. Only the only the orange most color, part of yeah. the skin. Now you taught me this also. You leave so when you peel an orange, yep. you actually leave that white layer that's underneath the skin. Which is where if I correct me if I'm wrong, you told me that, that all the most of the nutrition is on the inside of the skin. A good part of it. Yeah. Uh, mo a lot of it's called bioflavonoids, which are the vitamin C and vitamin C complex, mm -hmm. and they lie there. And you can't, that's why a lot of people that are smart, when they eat an orange, will scrape the white pulp with their teeth and chew it and swallow it, because they study that, and they found out that that white membrane just below the orange skin. See, the orange skin, sometimes you don't have a knife, you don't have, you, you don't have your thumb ready, and right. you want to eat that orange. So you take that bite, that first bite. Do you remember how bitter your mouth became? That orange oil is unsplittable, undigestible by the body, and you have a hard time digesting it. So if you were to make the orange with the, the, with the orange skin and all, you couldn't take it. It'd be too bitter, too raw. That's an undigestible, uh, oil, the aromatic oil that the body can't cope with, you see? So you peel the orange skin off, the coloring, but save that white, and you cut the orange in pieces and put it through your juice machine, you know? If you're not eating it, you've got to eat it, too, right. because I eat it that is, way is a that lot Is that true of times. with other fruits as well? I mean, the inside of the skin of an apple, for instance? Or? Sure, just below the skin of an apple. That, that's a sheath on the outside of an apple, but just below there lies up to 80% of the food value, you know? Same, same thing applies to pineapple. Same thing applies to grapes. You, you do grapes with white juicer and everything. You put the grapes with the stems and seeds and all like big bunches through there. Just like, a, just like a, if you're making wine at home. If you're Italian out there, you know what I'm talking about. You make your wine in the fall, like September and October. So you have a whole bunch of wine at home. The rest of it, and you put it in those great big 50-gallon barrels, you know, and you sulfurize it and everything else. But that's your, that's your fresh-made wine. Nothing in a can or a bottle with sulfites, you know, sulfur dioxide, none of that. You made it yourself, and it's fresh wine. And there's a certain way you do it, and you try not to sterilize it. You try not to, not to destroy those properties that are so vital by heat and everything else. It, it, life is beautiful. I, Put out that, that book. Look at the title of it. What's it say? It's, right below my name. Right below your name it says, Live Foods, Live Bodies. Live foods, yeah. live bodies. If you cook your food, you altered the nutritional factors involved. You've mm -hmm. changed it. You've killed the life force. What are the life force? Enzymes, which are your chemical catalysts, which speed up or slow down chemical reactions. How can you not have those enzymes? They're live. So you folks out there that take an orange and you peel an orange, you take the white pulp and there's some white pulp in there. Uh, uh, you take your teeth and you scrape it and you chew it and swallow it. You know, you're getting a good part of the food value now. And those enzymes that are in that white pulp are your flavonoids, bioflavonoids that strengthen the blood vessels and the capillaries. Tell you what it'll do. It'll keep you from having hemorrhaging. Strengthens all the blood vessels and the capillaries so your body will work properly. I do that all the time. I never, I never throw an orange peel away, especially if it's a nice thick white pulp on it, like a navel orange, you know. I scrape it with my teeth and chew it and swallow it. No taste to it, but I swallow it because I know my body's gonna process it and bring those bioflavonoids into my bloodstream to heal the body and build live capillaries and blood vessels. That's why I've lasted so long, yeah. you know? I've never met a man so excited about orange peels. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me ask you about some of the other uh, fruits because you know, juicing is such a common thing anymore. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go into Macy's or Bloomingdale's, everybody's selling, you know, juice machines. Exactly. So um, most people possess them at home but don't really know how to use them. Well. Um, for instance, with the orange, you, you explain you take off the, the outer uh, skin. Just the orange yeah. coloring. Right. With, uh, with an apple. You throw the whole apple, the whole in, the apple in, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you should wash them thoroughly. Right. And one of the things to do when you're using, when you're doing uh, grapes, for instance, it's very hard to wash right. each and every grape. Right. You have a technique. Yeah. So what you want to do now to 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 get to get all the um, 
all the pesticides off and all the fungicides off and all the preservative off. You want to you want to take your sink and plug it up. Stop it. Fill it about halfway full of cold water. Then you take four tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of salt. You put it in that water, just cold water from a faucet, and you stir it around. But that's not enough. You take a lemon, and you cut that lemon in half, and you, with your hand, you squeeze that lemon into the salt. That lemon and that salt makes a diluted form of hydrochloric acid. Now you soak, you're going to make a spinach salad at home. Instead of having all those, unless you bought it organic or grew it yourself, you, you don't know if it, how many pesticides have been sprayed on this stuff, you know? So what you do, you soak your, all your vegetables in there and then let it maybe for two, three minutes and swirl it around a little bit. Then take all those spinach leaves out of there or all the grapes. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic on grapes for energy, you know. Grapes with the stems and seeds and all that I'm going to eat mm -hmm. the grapes of is or there, make the juice out of it. Yeah. Is there a difference between red grapes and uh, black grapes well, some and of them green have, I like, grapes? I like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an aficionado of, uh, of Concord grapes, the little dark black, or dark blue, purple right. ones, you know? I love that. Concord grape juice, to me, is, is excellent. You don't get it all year round. So anyway, I'm a, I'm a great, my Christmas cocktail that's in, that's in this book, mm -hmm. I've been juicing that for 60 years. It's my favorite drink of all time for energy when I want to play racquetball. I'm, you know, I still play racquetball. Even with my bad knees, I go out and play racquetball against guys that are 